Sawati Kap, and good morning. I'm Brian Hoffman from Turnstile Tours, uh, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our fourth program in our series of special programs about Thai cuisine in the United States. Uh, these are sponsored and in partnership with Thai Select USA, and we are uh, pleased to be able to present them to you. A uh, little bit about us, Turnstile Tours. We are a tour company who has a very strong focus on providing a true sense of place and connecting and elevating organizations and communities and businesses whose stories are significant but lesser known or not well documented. And so that was why we connected with Thai Select uh, to present these stories of Thai chefs and restaurants and uh, cuisine in the United States to you. Um, hopefully you've joined us for our previous programs, but if not, it's not too late. You can still view them. Um, you can go to turnstiletours.com slash Thai food uh, to watch our previous three programs. The first one was about gastro diplomacy and the rise of Thai cuisine in the United States. Uh, we followed that up with a program about Thai immigration and met two chefs who are cooking Thai food for both a familiar audience and maybe an audience that's less familiar with Thai cuisine and, and talked about the differences there. And then our third program was about two of the distinct culinary regions in Thailand. We focused on the northern and southern parts of Thailand and learned about how those cuisines are a little bit different. And in all, all of these programs, we've met chefs uh, who run restaurants here in the United States and had some wonderful cooking demos and recipes from them. So you definitely want to check those out. We have some other Thai programs coming up. Uh, next week, we will be meeting two other chefs uh, who will be focusing on a different region in Thailand, uh, Isan, or the northeastern uh, part of Thailand. And in fact, one of the chefs will be calling us directly from Isan in Thailand, which will be very exciting. And the other one will be calling in from Minneapolis, just as exciting. Um, and they will be talking about their restaurants and that specific kind of cuisine. And then the following week will be our, our final program for this series, our grand finale, the future of Thai cuisine in the, uh, and sort of how two chefs have sort of stretched the boundaries and discovered a little bit of fusion there as well. And so we will be meeting chefs and getting cooking demos uh, on the 20th. Um, but today our program will be focusing on cooking with Thai ingredients and we'll be discussing the sort of core ingredients in Thai cuisine and we'll be meeting a chef who will, is very, very focused uh, on the ingredients. He focuses on seasonal and local ingredients. This is Chef Tara Wong Yo Nanthavatsiri, who we will be meeting from Pinto Garden here in New York City in Greenwich Village. We'll be talking about how the farmer's market and those seasonal ingredients sort of informs his cuisines. But before we bring him on, I just want to kind of go over um, some of the core ingredients for those that may be a little less familiar with Thai cuisine. Um, of course, there's lots and lots of Thai ingredients, so we're just going to scratch the surface here. Um, but uh, the basic important thing to understand about Thai cuisine is the importance of balance and harmony in cooking. It's true of all good cooking, but certainly in Thai cuisine, you will find sweet, sour, salty, um, and spicy, in addition to other flavors like pungent and creamy and herbal. And uh, here you see some of those ingredients, some of those herbs and limes and some of the spicy, fiery Thai bird chilies that you will see. Uh, the spicy component can become from many different things. Often it's from these bird chilies, maybe fresh or dried, or from black or white or green peppercorns as well. Um, I do have some um, ingredients here in person that I'd love to share with you as well. Um, when it comes to sweetness, uh, the, the typical one you'll find is this special kind of sugar, palm or coconut sugar, uh, that many, many chefs use that is, is not as overly sweet as just your cane or brown sugar uh, and provides a, a really nice tropical uh, quality. Um, so you'll find that a lot, but you'll also get sweetness from fruits sometimes like pineapple or mango or even tamarind, um, which is in our next photo here. Um, tamarind, in addition to being a little sweet, also brings a lot of that sour or sort of acidic notes uh, to Thai dishes. Um, you'll find a lot of that. Other sour flavors might come from lime uh, juice as well. Um, we also have on the next photo here, turmeric, which brings a little bit of heat, a little bit of pepperiness. Um, this is found a lot today, uh, certainly in places like New York, at coffee shops who are using turmeric for health benefits, which are certainly true in maybe their coffees or teas, 
but uh, Thais certainly use it in their cooking to help bring those pungent peppery flavors, uh, garlic, scallions, shallots, uh, ginger, those are other things you'll find in uh, Thai cuisine. And then I kind of like to think the most important three ingredients uh, is this herbal lemongrass, which brings sort of a tropical sort of muted citrus component. Um, the next one uh, you'll find a lot, maybe less familiar, less easy to find in American grocery stores. This is galangal, which is related to ginger, but has a very, very different flavor. Um, more of a cooling, peppery, pungent flavor than the sort of spicy, bold ginger, which is also used, by the way. Uh, and then this next ingredient, which is kefir lime, uh, which you won't find the, the lime used as often in the dishes, but you'll find those leaves, the kefir lime leaves, which are used in curries and soups. And uh, they, uh, they bring a much more aromatic and perfumey quality. Uh, to the dishes and a very fresh citrusy flavor. I also want to mention one thing you're not going to find in Thai food is dairy. Instead of butter, um, they use a lot of oils. Um, and in place of dairy, you'll find this, you'll find coconut milk used a lot in curries and desserts uh, as well. So coconut milk and coconut cream. And then uh, bringing in the salty flavors, um, this is very, very popular. This is fish sauce, which I think is probably backwards on your computer, but that's the modern day technology. Um, fish sauce, in place of fish sauce, you might find oyster sauce or soy sauce if you're trying to create a vegan dish or just salt itself. But, but those are the, the, the big flavors uh, in Thai ingredients, in Thai cooking. And you'll find it from the ingredients where they bring all of those flavors together. And someone who is very well versed in the ingredients and that balance and harmony um, is the chef that we're gonna meet today. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to go to Greenwich Village where you're going to meet Chef Yo from Pinto Garden who focuses on the ingredients he can find at the local farmer's market and traditional Thai ingredients to create uh, sort of cutting edge and seasonal dishes. So this is Chef Yo and I'm so pleased to bring him on the program. He's going to join us from his restaurant in the garden where I actually had the pleasure to dine just recently and it is COVID safe. It is... Um, uh, out, oh, there I am. There I am enjoying his incredibly addicting uh, uh, basil chicken uh, dish with some rice. It's so, so good. I can still taste it on my lips. So Chef Yo, please, welcome to the program. So great, glad, glad to have you on the program today. Hey, Chef. Can you hear me now? Hi. We can. Hi. Okay, so good to go. see you. Good to see you, Sawadee Kaap. <laughs> Yes, in that beautiful garden, which is really just such a hidden little gem and a treat uh, to dine there in, in, in the Greenwich Village. Um, so how is it, I wanted to ask, how has it been going for you? I know the pandemic has been just obviously insane, but you guys in some ways have had this wonderful garden and you've also participated in this program um, that Thai Select has sponsored, right? The Thai Food yes. for Heroes? Yes. Tell us a um, bit I mean, about that and what you guys have been doing. Absolutely. Like, of course, I'm sure that it's not just, not just only my restaurant, but um, every restaurant around across the country or even around the world that have the same problem. So um, Thai Select has been helpful in using and support the local business, especially Thai restaurant in the U.S. They're funding us in order to, for us to cook and still create job and give the food to all the hospital and all the heroes that during the pandemic. So um, I think that's the that's how we survive in in during this time. Yeah, we all have to work together here, which is which is really incredible. We we all have yeah we all just have to keep doing it. That what it is. Yeah, and so and you've been open for takeout, delivery, and outdoor dining as well. Right? Yes, yes. Um, in March, since we've been shut down um, during like mid-March, March, April, May, we do um, takeout and delivery. We never close um, because, you know, we have staff that at least they come to the restaurant, even though we have so little customer, we still be able to have some food to eat for all the staff. I think that's the main thing. I never shut down the restaurant at all. I think that, I mean, food is a, the key thing for everybody. Um, we still have to eat, right? So of I think course. since 
Yes, yeah, it's it's my it's my career. I I'm, I have to cook for anyone during the um, whatever it's gonna happen. Yeah. So tell us about that. How did you first get involved in cooking, and how did you come to open up um, a restaurant in New York? Okay, I mean I I will breathing a little bit like <laughs> okay. very short <laughs> because it's a long story. So I um, my background uh, was theater. I studied directing in theater way back in Thailand. So I came to New York in two thousand one right before 911 in order to continue the um the the theater career um because my dream was to be a director on broadway or whatever right just to be in theater and then you know 20 years ago it's everyone actors theaters um directors playwright has to have a second job in order to survive in new york city so that's how i get involved to be get a chance to be in the restaurant business I started as a busboy, server, runner, and then learning operation of the restaurant. And yeah, and then I had a chance to open a restaurant since 2006 and become a chef ever since. Yeah, and so the, the restaurant was Pinto in a different location originally, right? And then yes. you moved into this beautiful space uh, Thank more you. recently. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, um, the original one was on Christopher Street um, in 2000 six and then you know we have we lost the lease because it's been 10 years um, but i luckily enough to um, get the closer by like which which is this one that uh, we have a garden in the backyard um, that's why i yeah. call it pinto garden yeah well we're going to pull up some photos so people can really see that garden uh, and pinto what does pinto mean is it... yeah i mean yeah. most 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 people thought it's pintos like the so, so it's like a bean, right? The name of the bean. But in Thailand, right. Pinto, I, I think the original word is from bento in Japanese. So it's kind of ah. like, it's a tiffin. So it's a stack of the food. It's a stack of the um, lunchbox that, you know, a family carrying around to the temple. Um, they're going to um, do the farm in Thailand and they carry this food, put in stacks and then um, sharing for the family. So I think the bento in Japanese is like a food ah. box. And so I did it to each other. Yes. So it's and basically Tiffin. Tiffin, yeah. And you have a second restaurant as well in Brooklyn. Correct? Yes. Um, I have another one in Brooklyn Heights, which is not too far from here. It's like three subway stops um, from where I live, uh, from where the Pinto Garden is. Uh, it's the same concept, um, but different location. Um, and this is you with your business partner here, right? Yeah, my business partner, Kobe, who's the one who interior designs the restaurants and um, decorate all the flowers and all this stuff. Yeah, and I know during um, the pandemic, you sort of set up this little shop inside as well. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a way to make a living, right? So we flipped the dining area where um, nobody be able to sit. So we flipped that area into... Um, kind of like an antique store. So we call it craft and cuisine. So we, Kobe has like go on flea market to get like all the merchandise and all the stuff to use in the restaurant, but we didn't have a chance to use it because we've been shut down. So we put it, uh, plants and all the little thing um, to share with the neighborhood to get, you know, some pretty stuff. Yeah, and it really is, it's beautiful. Um, we had a question about, um, what's the address? Uh, I don't know um, if they're asking about the address in Greenwich Village or in Brooklyn, but what's the address so people can find both restaurants? Like the physical address? It's yeah, the physical one, address. Yeah, for Pinto Garden, it's 117 West 10th Street. So it's between Greenwich Avenue and 6th Avenue. Mm -hmm. So, and for the Brooklyn High, it's 128 Montague Street. Um, it's in downtown Brooklyn. Um, we are right around the corner, luckily enough that we have a chance to put kind of like a partition on the street, that location, so people will be able to um, sit down on, on the barricade that the government allow us to do. And we also opened the, yeah. um, the dining inn already, and Kobe decorated oh, all the flowers and all the stuff over there, yeah. too. Oh, great. So let's talk about the concept of the restaurants, because I know that ingredients are very important to you and and um tell us about how that how why and how that works yeah i mean 
<laughs> so, you know, once we opened the restaurant, I think it's because of my theater background, you know, it's actor and director thing. So I always see things fun, excited. Like I, I'm getting tired of cooking the same dish every single time, every single day. It's, to be honest, it's, it's a routine job. Like if you not have a passion doing it, it's very hard. You have to have passion and really committed to do what it is. So in order to make it fun, so you have to see, thing, see things differently. Um, I'm getting bored of just cooking papaya salad every day, right? So I'm looking, start looking for this ingredient in season and try to adapt it into Thai flavors and Thai food. And it's getting more fun. So the concept of Pinto Garden is we do the seasonal Thai cooking. So whatever in season, um, we will see the ingredients and I talk to among chef team and we will create the Thai flavors um, from those ingredients. That's incredible. And you use the, the farmer's market quite a bit, I know. Yeah, um, it's very close by. So, I mean, Union Square Farmer Market have every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So we just walk there five minutes. We can um, have a leadership with all the farmers and we can get like what's really coming. The farmer will be able to giving you the idea like really this season, the corn is so fresh, very sweet. So maybe you get the idea and you develop those with the team. That's how yeah. we make it fun. Yeah. Definitely. And I know in a little bit, we're going to get a little cooking demo from you and, and you're going to be making a salad that you sort of change as the seasons change, right? Yes. So, yeah, um, so that we'll get there. So we'll get there this, soon. Yeah, you will get there, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, I'd love to, you know, we do have some photos of some of your food as well. So I'd love to okay. show everyone in addition to what we're making. And in fact, what we're making, the sort of previous version of it. Um, so this is, uh, this is sort of a beautiful layout of, of the dishes. And I know we have some closer up of each one. Um, so, yeah, this was one of my favorite things I tried at your restaurant. Yeah, you had it when you come here. Um, sure this did. is kind of like a staple to our um, restaurant right now. I introduced this dish since 2017 in summer, I guess. Um, it's the mushroom lab salad. If you know Thai cuisine, you know the word lab for sure. Lab is kind of like Thai salad with all the herb, roasted rice, um, usually Thai people introduce it with minced chicken, like grouse chicken, or some people introduce it with the grilled pork. Um, I'm creating this dish based on the vegetarian version. Um, there's a, a lot of vegetarian people come into uh, my restaurant. Uh, so I see many mushroom in that summer. So I pick different kind of mushroom. Uh, we saute it and still mix it with the um, Thai ingredients the Thai herbs and all the seasonings. So it's still lab, but instead of pork and ground chicken, um, I use the Y mushroom. And it's brilliant because you still get that meaty texture. and uh, Yeah, and you get aromatic of different kind of mushroom. In this dish, I have like shiitake mushroom, king oyster mushroom, and oyster mushroom. Yeah, it's wonderful. Okay, and so next we have probably the showstopper of the restaurant in terms of visuals, right? Yeah, so this dish is the, basically if you have Thai food before, you probably know khao soy, which is the yellow curry from the north of Thailand. Um, they serve with, most likely serve with chicken, breast chicken, or the breast beef. Um, I introduce it with chart ribs. Uh, we cook the, we create the curry paste, the khao soy curry paste based on um, local vegetable ingredients here. So the flavor, the aloma, it's, slightly different form you have it in way back in Thailand, but this is kind of like a New York version. Um, and so with the egg noodle, both steam and fry, as you said that it's kind of like a, when, because of the aromatic and the presentation, they, uh, when they serve in the restaurant, so you see like a big bone across the big bowl, um, people will be like, what is that? And yeah, it got a lot, very good feedback on this dish. Yeah, heads turn, I saw, goodbye everyone. Everyone looks, what is that? What is that? I got to order that, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and this, of course. As of course, Pad Thai. Um, you know, as a Thai chef, you have to know how to cook Pad Thai, right? At least, because it's stable. The name of it is a national um, Thai dish that's 
spread around the world that people when you talk about Thailand, you know about Thai food, and of course you have to talk about Pad Thai. But my version is differently. Like most likely, Pad Thai is mixed with vegetables, um, peanut, um, the radish, uh, the thing that saute all together in, the, in order to get the um, dry um, tamarind, um, savory noodles with the fresh vegetable. Um, in order to saute everything together, I just separate it. Yeah because to get the guests be able to mix and match their own version. You know, I got lots of time that I don't eat bean sprouts, I don't eat chive, I don't eat scallions, I don't eat, so I'm like, why not? I put everything in it separately and so with the local fresh vegetable because the idea to eat that intense flavor of tamarind sauce when you saute with noodle, with the crisp vegetable, the fresh vegetable, it's, it's a very good feeling. So that's why we separate everything around. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, and I think the last photo is uh, of the, uh, so yeah, this is not what you're making today, but almost, right? <laughs> yeah, almost. It's the same dressing. So actually this, this is the uh, watermelon salad. Um, so we have, if you have Thai food, you probably know one of the famous dish in Thai food is papaya salad and also the dressing. So I just take the idea of the papaya salad and take out of the dressing idea and make it, mix it with the um, seasonal uh, ingredients. Uh, for example, in summer, we have fresh watermelon. The watermelon is so sweet, crisp and watery. So mix it with this dressing. Um, it, it's very refreshing uh, during the summer. But now when we move into fall, we have fresh corn and then we're going to have squash later on but right now today what i'm gonna make is the same dressing that what watermelon salad being served it's just the with corn today that's that's great well we'd love to see that and i know that we are able to share the recipe for the dressing which you've been uh, yep. kind enough to share as well with us and so we'll pass that along to everyone and let you know how to find it yeah um so yeah so um and if anyone has any questions uh, who's watching for Chef Yo, please drop it in the uh, chat box and Cindy will send it my way. Um, but let's, um, let's, let's take a look at the corn salad, if, if you don't mind. Tell us about sure. it, how um, it comes together. So basically what I'm trying to, uh, what I'm doing today is the same thing that uh, I introduced you with the watermelon salad. So the dressing itself, it's, um, as you mentioned, it, the Oreo program that um, Thai food, it's kind of like um, it's harmonies with flavors, aromatic, everything all together. It's kind of it's it's like you listening to the orchestra, you know, all the instrument playing, all the music. The ingredients in Thai food are same as well, but the key ingredients for Thai food, especially for this dressing, is the lamb. Uh, we have chili, like a bird eye chili, and garlic, and also instead of using just regular tomato, we have the heirloom tomato which is give you the flavor, like much intense flavor rather than the regular tomato. And of course, fish sauce, you can, but if you're vegan, you can twist it, not using the um, fish sauce, you can use salt instead. It's fine to me, I tried it before. It, it makes it slightly different, but it's not that, um, that much. And also, uh, I have lamb juice here. And of course, the, the one that you mentioned it before, it's the um, palm sugar. So the palm sugar, they come in two, two sizes. The one with the, in shape already, like this, is 150, uh, 150 gram per piece. So it's already measured for you, or you can get another one that come in like a plastic can that you open it. But that one, you will have a candle in the top. So you need to get rid of the candle that they seal it first. It's a traditional Thai way to seal it. We don't need, we don't need um, like a big machine to do this. It's the, very traditional way. But I mean, for the dressing, you have to break this um, palm sugar first. But if you make curry, if you make like a green curry or red curry, you can just drop this in um, the, cur um, the coconut milk that you already saute with the curry paste. So it's very easy to use. Um, it's not, the sweetness of the palm sugar, it's not too sharp um, compared to the regular fine sugar. Um, when I was young, as a kid, I can just eat this like a candy. 
at home, and it's it's really good. It's a it's made from coconut. Um, so this one is the worst. Probably that better I than break, I probably better than a lot of the candies they make. It's just pure sugar. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, well, yeah, I think so. So in order to break it, like I can just use like a big knife, like a chef knife, to break it in half. You can see that it's it's cut easily, so it's not that hard. If you see, if you feel it like a stone, and you feel like oh, it might be hard to you know, break it and all this stuff. So all the uh, recipe that I gave it to you, um, you can just you ask my restaurant be using, um, you can use a blender, just regular blender, just put everything based on the recipe and you will get the dressing salad like this. And you can keep it in the fridge, you can mix it with any vegetable, um, anything. Um, you can even use it for the spring roll sauce, like anything, but it, it's very variety of using it. But today, what I'm gonna do it is very traditional Thai way, classic. That you can, we can use the muddle instead. Um, the difference is that the texture of the dressing. Um, this one is will be not too fine like the blender is. But the reason that I use the blender because it's easier to clean. I'm sure that every household has a blender um, if you're cooking it, and you can keep this, you know, a long time. So should we start doing with the model thing and I, see how? Sure, yeah, let's see how it goes. Yeah, I know. If you go in Thai restaurant, you can see that this is the typical um, equipment, right? In every Thai restaurant has it. So we, I'm gonna start smash it with the, with the garlic and the chili. So this one is already measured. Um, you can use the garlic clove like um, about three to four five, um, pieces. Um, if you want spicy, you can put more of this chili. Um, and when you smash it, you not just want to, you don't want to bang it in order to get the, all the chili and garlic burst into your eyes, right? You probably cover it and just slightly um, smashing it until it's, it breaks down. But you don't want to just keep banging it. You know, that's the speed of it. You know, to, you have to keep to look at your ingredients that what you are working with, that they already kind of like expand it. You can smell the aromatic of the garlic and the chili coming out. Because if you bang it too hard, it's gonna smash it to your face and you're gonna cry because of the chili. You know? So after the garlic and chili, um, I usually do it with the lamb. You can do lamb juice if you don't want lamb wish to get like a, the bitterness, but I personally love this, the taste and the smell of the lamb wish. It's a little, slightly bitter, but I mean, the bitterness is one of the flavor that I personally like it. Um, it's kind of like break down or the, uh, the other flavor. You not get, it's too sweet because you have the bitterness breaking it. You don't have it too nuttery because you have the bitterness breaking it. That's my preference. So that's what we're gonna do today. So we just smash the lamb juice out of it. Um, it depends on how the how much water of the lamb that you have, right? Um, you can if you don't want to do it, you can just, as I said, you can just juice your lamb and put it into the side of the cup in here, and then you can just smash the tomato. So you use the color of the tomato, the heirloom tomato. Um, the you can try it. The I recommend the heirloom tomato because it's they have this very different flavor, they have the more depth of the flavors in the heirloom tomato, and um, it's pretty too. So, and you just smash it um, not too hard because to the tomato skin, you don't want to, you know, break into the tomato juice, right? Okay. And then we have long bean chili. Oh, uh, no, sorry, the long, the green long bean. It's not a chili, it's the it's the um, it's a Thai bean, but if you don't have the Thai bean in your uh, roche earlier, you can use the sugar snap pea. You can use the um, French long bean. Just regular long bean is fine as well. It's not that much different. Okay. And, and chef, uh, there was a question about the tomatoes. Do you find that the tomatoes in Thailand are different than the tomatoes here? Yeah, the flavor is different. Um, it's the same thing with the herb. Like the, the flavors of the lemongrass in Thailand is very spicy. It's kind of like chili. But lemongrass in the, in, in the state is very uh, sweet. 
and um, not as much as uh, aromatic as in Thailand. The tomato as well, I think it's because of the, the weather and the soil that we grow up thing makes big herbs and vegetables slightly different, right? And yeah. I put the, the, the palm sense. sugar in there. Yep. Sorry. Uh, there was a question about the tomatoes. Are the tomatoes peeled or do you put them in with the peel on? No, uh, no, it's it's not peel at all. It's just with the peel on because you want the shape of the, the tomato still like a piece. If you if you try the papaya salad in Thailand, um, it's the same thing. They put the tomato, but you you don't see. But you want the juice tomato to mix it with the palm sugar and of course fish sauce and lime juice as well. Okay, and then um, I put the fish sauce in here. So this is the step of making the, um, the, the dressing, okay? So it's the same thing. If you have a blender, as I said, you put everything all together and just blending it until it's become um, uh, a dressing, like water, like everything. Even though the tomato, that's you just blend all the tomato skin and everything, um, not see the, 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 the rest of it. But this is very, very traditional Thai way. You see the, the look when I put it on the plate that, it's gonna look like a papaya salad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now, um, after I mix all the ingredients, everything, I will. Now we're not gonna smash anything because we don't want to um, break any liquidy or anything else inside. It's just. Ah, the rest. Could. Yeah. Could we see in the? Is it easy for you to move the camera into? Sure. The, so we, or, I think people would love to see what it looks like there before we add okay. another solid. Yep. Um, Do you be able to? Here we go. You can see that that's yeah. the the dressing and all the stuff, the water, the oh, liquid God. of the fish sauce, the garlic, the tomato, and the palm sugar is already in there. Wonderful. Yeah. Now what we're gonna mix is what we're gonna mix is with corn. So basically this fresh corn for this season. So you just boil it and just cut into pieces, you know, to get rear it and you just mix it with the dressing that we have. Mm. The sweetness of the corn we incorporate with the um, the the dressing that we have, and it will enhance the flavors of the corn. The other the other thing is because when you serve the salad, you want something that have the crunchiness of it, right? So basically, we put peanut in it. But if you're not a fan of peanut or you're allergic to peanut, you can use other thing. You can use crispy shallot. You can use the um, um, other nuts that you're not allergic to. You can use almond, you can use like so many things to get the, just the crunchiness, okay? Now you can see that it's look like the papaya salad in Thailand right now, right? And it's colorful too. You have the red from the tomato, you have the yellow from the corn, you have the green from the bean, right? There we go. And I, I, I tried this salad when I was there last week, and I can say it is perfect example of balance. I mean, it, it was sweet and spicy and sour and salty and yeah, all it, of it. As we talked it before, like I always compare Thai food to the, um, it's like you see a firework that, you know, when you have the first bite, um, it's like you see the firework at the same time. You see many colors, it's bursts. It, you know, if you see the dressing is not enough, you and you have the dressing, you can spoil it on on the table. It's the uh, same thing as well. If you want the salad to be very, you know, juicy and all this stuff. So now you got like a corn salad with the what I call palm sugar vinaigrette. You know, because it's basically it's made from the palm sugar and have the tomato and the fish sauce and lamb juice. So yeah. Well, Chef, thank you so much for sharing. Hopefully everyone is going to be making a salad tonight and we'll try out your, your, your dressing, uh, which we yeah. can share in the comments. But, okay. um, but we're going to let everyone make sure they know how to find out about your restaurant and stay in touch. So we drop that all in. And, uh, and really, this has been, this has been wonderful, to, for me at least, to come back to your restaurant virtually and, and explore your food again. So thank you so, so much for sharing. Yeah. Um, uh, continue to do the amazing stuff that you're doing and uh, uh, and yeah and we will see you soon thank you again thank you stop by more yes I just changed the menu actually oh so that's right you're here. constantly <laughs> changing the menu this season wow yes. I don't have to 
I will stop by. And hopefully everyone else will as well. So stay in, stay tuned, everyone. We will send this to you. It'll be on our YouTube page and at our website, Turnstile Tours slash Thai food. Um, TurnstileTours.com slash Thai food. Okay, thank you so much, everyone.